Hey everyone, it's Triple Mango Threat, and today we're talking about a mono green deck that loves counters and only for $30. Let's jump right into it. So our commander is Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. For three green, it's a 0-0 giant noble, but when it enters the battlefield, it's going to enter with four plus one plus one counters. Whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Yorvo. Then if that creature's power is greater than Yorvo's, put a plus one plus one counter on Yorvo. Now this is a very powerful commander. Do not underestimate Yorvo. Now I say this because there's going to be a lot of green creatures entering our battlefield. We have cards like Fist of Ironwood. For one and a green, we can enchant a creature, which this can be our commander. It's going to enter the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens. And the enchanted creature has trample, so this will encourage Yorvo to start dealing combat damage, and it's going to get through. So already, for two mana, we get two counters on Yorvo, and now he has trample. Fungal Sprouting is another great way to have a bunch of counters on Yorvo. For four mana, we can put X 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens onto the battlefield, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. Well, already with our commander out, that's four saplings, which that will double Yorvo's power just for four mana. But imagine Imagine if our commander is a 10-10, this is 10 tokens we're putting onto the battlefield and another 10 power our commander could be getting from this. Howl of the Night Pack. For 7 mana, we can put a 2-2 Green Wolf creature token onto the battlefield for each forest we control. This can make a lot of tokens, especially in the late game. And last for the token makers, let's talk about Verdant Force. This does cost 8 mana, but it's a 7-7 elemental and at the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 Green Sapling creature token. What's really sweet about this is it's not just our upkeep, this is every player's upkeep. So one turn cycle, that's four saprolines, that means that's four counters on Yorvo. This is just a great card to be having in your deck. Now when we want to start giving our creatures trample, we have cards like Brawn, Nylia's Forerunner, and Pride Malkin. So when Brawn is in our graveyard and we control a forest, our creatures are now going to have trample. So if this dies, that's no problem at all because now it's going to give all of our creatures trample. Nylia's Forerunner is going to cost one more mana, but we're going to want this on the battlefield because it's going to give our other creatures trample. And finally, Pride Malkin gives our creatures trample if they have a plus one plus one counter. So ultimately this is going to give our commander trample and if our other creatures happen to have a plus one plus one counter on them, they're going to get trample as well. Now since we have cards that are making our commander have more power and toughness, we're now giving our commander trample, it's really important that we find ways to protect our commander with cards like Alpha Authority. What's really nice is that it only costs two mana and we can make it where our commander now has hexproof and it can't be blocked by more than one creature. Now add this with trample, it's going to be really easy to start killing our opponents. And more ways to give our commander hexproof, we have Mask of Avacyn and Mirror Shield. These are very affordable budget alternatives to cards that give our creatures Hexproof or Shroud. So you don't have to spend two to five dollars for cards like Swiftfoot Boots or Lightning Greaves. These are 50 cents or less. Yes, they cost a little bit more to equip, but when we're on a budget, these are great options. There are creatures that help us with removal, taking care of our opponent's stuff with cards like Acidic Slime. Now, when it enters the battlefield, we can destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land, and it also has Death Touch. So if our opponents have some huge creature, we can end up killing it. And there's Reclamation Sage, when it enters the battlefield, we can destroy target artifact or enchantment. Now remember, this is also going to benefit our commander because a green creature is entering the battlefield, so it's going to make our commander get another plus one plus one counter. We also have non-creature removal spells like Kenrith's Transformation. For one on the green, it's an enchantment where we can enchant a creature, which this would be our opponent's. When it enters the battlefield, we draw a card. But now the enchanted creature loses all its abilities, and it's a green out creature with base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. So this is going to be really helpful, especially if it's their commander, and they have no way to sack sacrifice it. If their commander is very important to them, use this card. We also have naturalized nature's claim and return to nature. This is always going to take care of an artifact or enchantment, but what's really cool about return to nature is that we can even exile a card from a graveyard. So if somebody is about to get something from their graveyard in response, we can use a card like this. And again, for two mana, having three different options is a great rate to me. Now, I love to draw cards, so let's talk about Abzan Beastmaster. For two and a green, we have a 2-1 Hound Shaman. At the beginning of our upkeep, we're going to draw a card if we control the the creature with the greatest toughness or tied for the greatest toughness. Now this is going to be very likely because our commander gets huge over time. Every time a green creature enters, we're getting a plus one plus one on our commander. So drawing cards at our upkeep is very likely. Also with Beast Whisperer, whenever we cast a creature spell, we're going to be drawing a card. In the deck, we have 32 creatures, so it's very likely we're casting creature spells. We also have Colossal 
Majesty. At the beginning of our upkeep, if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, we're going to draw a card, which already our commander is going to be a 4-4, four, four, so this is a great one to have. Elemental Bond is only going to care about power 3 or greater creatures entering our battlefield. And we have huge creatures, like remember, Burnt Force. This is a 7-7, seven, seven, which makes 1-1s one at every upkeep. Or we have another huge creature like Bellowing Tangleworm. It has Intimidate, and it gives our other green creatures Intimidate as well, which means this creature can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. So our creatures are only going to be blocked by artifact creatures and if they have the color green in them. There's also the classic card Harmonize, which is going to let us draw three cards for four mana, which is insane by the way, because there's a blue card that does the exact same. And blue's all about drawing cards, and I hope to make a video about this later. Anyways, Harmonize is a crazy good card, especially for 25 cents. Hunter's Prowess is an amazing card, and I love to play this one. So it is at sorcery speed, but for five mana until end of turn, target creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample, which is very helpful. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw that many cards. Well, imagine if our commander is a 7-7. Seven, seven. We add this, we can deal 10 damage to one of our opponents. They may block with a couple of creatures. We're still going to draw a bunch of cards off of this one. And the last one I want to talk about is Shamanic Revelation. For five mana, we can draw a card for each creature we control, and this is going to be a lot, especially because it's not just non-token creatures. It just specifies creature. So we're going to be making a lot of tokens in this deck already, and it has the added bonus of Ferocious, which means we're going to gain four life for each creature we control with power four or greater. I don't really care about this part of the card, just that I'm drawing for each creature I control. This is just an amazing one to have. And now let's talk about how we can actually win the game. So we're going to have a lot of creatures on our battlefield, so when we have cards like Endrace Forerunners and Overrun, we can easily win the game with these cards. Giving our creatures plus two, plus two, Vigilance, and Trample is already insane, especially because this is a 7-7 seven, seven with Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. So for eight mana, we're buffing each of our creatures and an additional seven power from Enrace Forerunners. This is a great card to finish the game with, and Overrun is a great budget option as well. This will give our creatures plus three, plus three, and Trample just for five mana. So now even our Llanowar Elves or Elvish Mystics, our mana dorks are actually going to be able to do some damage, and now they have Trample. So they're four fours, or even with our one one Sapperlings, they're four fours with Trample now. This gets insane very fast. I want to thank Caleb for making this video suggestion, and Caleb also happens to be a patron. So if you'd like to become a patron today, you can start seeing your name at the end of these videos. And if you'd like to purchase this deck, you can use the TCG link down below. It's going to help out the channel at no additional cost to you. If you're planning on buying any altar sleeves, be sure to use the coupon code Triple Mango Threat. It's going to give you 5% off your whole order. Be sure to comment down below what you think of this deck tech and subscribe for more mango content. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, peace.